have you ever been to a presentation where everything went really well, you enjoyed the presentation and you now walk out and you're reflecting and you can't really remember what the core message was. You can't really remember what the presentation was about. Good morning, everyone. Peter Jews by name. I'm a public speaking trainer and coach, a keynote conference speaker. And today I want to talk to you about the importance of ending your presentation strongly and six different ways that you can end your presentation. Now, maybe the reason you can't remember what the presentation was about was because their ending was what I call a soft landing. They didn't nail their ending. They didn't do that call to action. They didn't elevate the core message right at the end of the presentation. So I'm going to share with you some strategies to make sure the next time you present, the next time you do some training, that your ending, your, your core message, your take home content is what people walk away with. Let's get started. So six different ways to end your presentation. Just some basic rules, uh, ask questions as you go, type them in the chat box if you wish, take notes. Think about your own circumstances, your own presentation, maybe one in the past. Was there anything you would have done differently to nail your ending? Or maybe you've got one coming up. Is there something you can change to just elevate the importance of that presentation? Just elevate the impact of your take home message. And I record these webinars. So should I gloss over something that you wish to review? You can look at the recording or you can send me an email and I will get back to you. So I've mentioned the ending. Why is the ending so important? Why finish strong? And I call it nailing your ending. It comes from a behavioral organizational psychology rule. And that rule or that phenomena is called the rule of recency. And what they've discovered is people tend to remember the most recent event. So if your last words uh, on the money have got great content, that's going to be fresh in our memory. So by, by definition, when I finish this in 27 minutes time, the last sentence, the last words I say, apparently you're going to remember. So I describe that as valuable real estate, the closing, the ending of your presentation, of your conference keynote, of your seminar, the ending is valuable real estate. Make it count. And I call that also the last 60 seconds matters. And I mentioned the soft landing. Let me give you some examples of soft landing. So people finish their presentation and then they go into some niceties like this. So thank you very much. You've been a wonderful, wonderful crowd. I've really enjoyed my time with you and I hope at some stage we can work together in the future. Uh, I know some of you have traveled a long way. Please have safe journeys home. And yeah, thank you. Thank you for your participation. It's been very, very enjoyable. Any combination of those words, we've all heard them. I call them soft landings. They're polite, they're respectful, but they contain no content or no value to the listener, to the audience, to the people you're speaking to. Now, some people object to this and say, but hang on, I need to be polite. Yes, you do. So I would move that polite soft landing forward so thanks everyone for your participation. I know this has been a rather emotional journey. Uh, 
So thank you once again for participating. But remember, what we need to do now is dot, 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 and that would be your core message. So this is some psychology as to why I want you to end strong and lessen the soft impact, the soft landing. If you need to thank people, if you need to be respectful, if you need to say all those niceties, please do, but move that forward and then allow that space at the end, that 30 to 60 seconds where you nail your ending. So how can we nail our endings? First of my six strategies, end with a summary. End with a summary. The three steps to early retirement. So I've done a 45 minute retirement seminar, a 60 minute retirement workshop. So remember the three keys to retiring early, successful retirement are one, two, three, and then you zip it. You don't say the three steps to retirement are one, two, three. Thank you very much. You've been a lovely, lovely crowd. Uh, have a safe journey home. And if I can help you in the future, please let me know. My mobile number, by the way, is 04 dot, dot, dot. I'm going to remain out the back for 15 minutes. If you've got any further questions, avoid that. Because once again, you're elevating the soft landing ahead of your key call to action. The key summary, the three steps to early retirement. Four keys to writing a book. The five habits of successful entrepreneurs. They are one, two, three, four, five. A good way to end and make sure people remember is to end with a summary of what you've just spoken about. A second way to end is end with a call to action. If you only do one thing today, dot, dot, dot. With the mining sector, they often have pre-start meetings or they have safety updates. And one of the things they'll talk about is a particular issue that's present at the moment that they wanna put the focus of that pre-start meeting. They'll talk about what's happening, sort of key messages from, from head office. And then there might be a focus on maybe snake bite first aid. The temperatures are rising, snake activity is increasing, so it's time for everyone to refresh their snake bite first day. And they talk about that. They talk about how many reported snake sightings, a little bit of a story. And then as they're ending, what they can say is, so if you only do one thing today, go back to your workplace, and revise your snake bite first aid safety policy. Get out your snake bite first aid policy, revise it, refresh, become familiar. What's the one thing that you want people to do after you've presented? And once again, don't do the one thing. So if you only do one thing to if you only do one thing today, go home or go back to your workplace and review that snake bite first aid policy. Okay, everyone, have a good day. And just remember, uh, yep, this is the end of our shift. Enjoy your weekend back in Perth. Uh, I wonder if the Dockers are going to win. Once again, I've gone to the soft landing. And what happens is my call to action gets diluted by the other words I keep saying. And all of a sudden, as I talk about the Dockers and gee, Melbourne looks like they're gonna go back to back at the AFL, then you've forgotten about the call to action. What's your call to action that will enable you to elevate 
and Nile, New England. End by closing a loop. A loop is often part of storytelling and comedians use a loop quite a lot. And the closing of the loop creates kind of a memorable and aha moment. And it's just that little bit, that missing piece of the story. Now, if you don't close a loop in a story, the story needs to make sense in its own right. But then when you come back and close the loop, everyone goes, aha, so that's what happened. A classic example would be if a financial planner was talking about retiring Australians and how probably 80 to 90% of Australians are going to retire uh, with insufficient funds to enjoy the lifestyle they want to. And they start by saying, and I had this client, his name was Peter. Uh, he was approaching 65, still a fair way away from the old age pension. And he still had a mortgage and he had credit card debts. And it was look and it was look, and he wanted to retire, and it was looking like he wasn't going to be able to retire and enjoy the income that he wanted to. The things, his dreams he wanted to do in his retirement. He probably wouldn't have been able to achieve them at his current status. And that's where the financial planner comes in. And I want to talk to you about five strategies to help you prepare for retirement so you're not in Peter's situation where you've left it maybe too late. So that's my story, my introduction. Now I'm going to go through the five strategies. I'm going to run the seminar. Now we move into the end. And this is closing the loop. So remember, if you follow those five strategies, you will be able to achieve financial uh, security and a retirement lifestyle you want. Oh, and remember Peter that I spoke about at the start of this presentation? Peter adopted those strategies. And by working a little bit longer and by reducing his expenditure, by knocking off his mortgage, Peter's now retired and he's living the lifestyle and chasing those retirement dreams that he thought he'd never be able to achieve. Peter used those five steps and now is retired successfully and happily. That's the closing of the loop. You have the story, the information, and then as you end, you add this, that another layer, all that nuance, that aha, uh -huh, that enables people to remember. I once heard a metaphor described by a great speaker called Glenn Capelli. And Glenn said, think of three lifts. So you sort of take people on a journey in the first lift and you bring them down to level two and you just park the lift there. You just leave it. Everyone's comfortable. Everyone's fine. They're at level two. And they don't know they're at level two necessarily. Then there's another lift, the second lift, and you bring that down, you park that at level three. Everyone's comfortable. And then there's a third lift and you bring everyone down to level one and you just park it there. Then all of a sudden you come back and you bring all three lifts back to ground floor and everybody comes out as they all reach the end of the story, as they all reach ground floor and they go about their business. Closing the loop is bringing the lifts so you can park a story, park some aspects, park some information, but it needs to make sense in its own right. And then when you bring them all back together, people say, oh, aha. Uh -huh. And there can be multiple loop stories as well, where there's more than one story. These are the three different lifts, but they all come to the same ending and creates a powerful, memorable take home moment. Comedians use it all the time. As a speaker, as a trainer, as a presenter, think about closing the loop as a way of creating aha moments and nailing your ending. The fourth way of closing a presentation is closing with a quote, a memorable, a strong quote, a quote that 
relates to your message and just just reiterates what you've said. One of the workshops I run is how to overcome your fear of public speaking. And one of the quotes I use with that, and I can use it at the end. So remember, fear is a normal part of public speaking and fear may never go. And Mark Twain, that famous American author, the author of Huckleberry Finn said, there's two kinds of speakers, those that have fear and those that are liars about having fear. And what he means by that is, fear is a normal part of public speaking. Mark Twain said, two kinds of speakers, those that have fear and those that are liars about having fear. And that's where I would end it. And people remember that quote, Mark Twain, two kinds of speakers, those with fear and those who are liars when they say they don't have fear. And that's good news, that's comforting because it means that the fear I'm trying to get rid of in my public speaking, I don't need to. Fear is a normal part of public speaking. What quote could you use just to nail your ending and make people remember what the core message is about? Another quote I still use quite often when I'm talking about public speaking as a business skill, public speaking as a, as a leadership skill, public speaking as an instrument of influence. We don't just public speak because of hot air. And I can end my presentation on public speaking as a leadership skill, presentation skills for leaders with a quote like this. So remember, Public speaking is one of the most powerful skills you'll ever have. It's the skill as a leader that you call upon most. So Winston Churchill said, if you can stand on your feet and speak to a group of people, you possess one of the most powerful skills known to human beings. That's right. If you can stand on your feet and speak to a group of people, you have one of the most powerful skills known to human beings. And that's where I'll end it. Once again, just iterating my core take-home message by a quote that I'm hoping people will remember. And as Franklin D. Roosevelt said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. What quote? could you use just to nail your ending? You can end with the benefits to the audience. Most audiences, and I do this in my public speaking workshops, just to help people shift their mindset as a speaker. You know, you're all looking at me. Um, what if I muck up? So, you know, the fear, the self-doubt creeps in, but most audiences are generally what I call selfish. And I don't mean that in a bad way. When I attend a seminar, I'm selfish. When I go to a workshop to participate, I'm selfish. I'm there out of self-interest. I want to learn. I want extra knowledge. I want some skills. I want to know the way forward in the particular problem. I'm going to enroll in a seminar on how to be more effective with YouTube videos. I'm not going there to cheer the person on. I'm not going there to pat them on the back. I'm going there out of self-interest. I'm being a little bit selfish. So end with what's in it for me, being the audience. What's in it for them? So focus on the benefit to the audience. And if we go back to financial planning, so remember, if you follow these five steps, you can have peace of mind and you know that you'll retire with the income you desire, with the lifestyle you desire, and you'll be able to tick off the bucket list, the bucket list, your retirement, the bucket list, knowing you've got the financial resources. 
what's in it for your audience. Now I've got benefits, not features. A lot of people focus on features. Fundamentally, people buy on the benefit or the value to the individual rather than a list of features. Let me share with you a classic example. Or in fact, let me turn it around. If I say to you, could you go to Bunnings and buy me a three inch tungsten tip bullet head nail, what have I asked you to buy? And the common response I get is a three inch tungsten tip bullet head nail. To my response, I would say, well, no, not, well, yeah, that's the features, that's what I've got. But what I've really got is the ability to hang the picture, the painting that's been on my lounge room floor for three months. And my wife has been saying, Peter, Peter, when are you gonna hang that picture? That picture's driving me crazy. When are you gonna hang that picture? So with that three inch tungsten tip, bullet head nail, I can now hang my picture and my wife will no longer be on my back. Peter, when are you gonna hang that picture? You brought me peace of mind. You brought the ability to get my picture on the wall. So think of when you're crafting a message and when you're ending, end with the benefit to the audience. The classic one is the iPod and the MP3 player. This occurred in the same time within history. And what we had was we had Bill Gates and we had Steve Jobs, both launching their new products. Bill Gates went first. I'd like to introduce you to the latest MP3 music player. It comes in four colors. It has seven hours of battery life, holds 2,635 songs, 250 megabytes of memory. I give you the latest MP3 music player. Same time in history, roughly, Steve Jobs says, let me introduce you to the iPod. Your entire music library in your pocket, anywhere, anytime. Your entire music library in your pocket, anywhere, anytime. Which one do you want? And overwhelmingly, the response that people give me is it's the iPod. He focused on the benefits to the buyer, benefits to the audience. Steve, uh, Bill Gates focused on the features. Seven hours, 250 megabytes, four colors, 2,600 songs, feature, feature, feature. Needless to say, the iPod quickly outsold the MP3 music player. And as they say, the rest is history. So make sure when you end, end on the benefits, not the features and what this means to your audience, to your listener. And number six, solve the problem. If it's a financial planning and someone's trying to reduce tax, minimize tax, trying to increase investment, trying to boost their retirement, their superannuation. If it's an organization that's struggling with, with absenteeism due to stress, how to reduce stress in the workplace, end with the solution to the problem. You would have gone through the solution during the presentation and it may be a three-step or a four-step process, but you're now elevating 
your message in your conclusion. So if you want to retire comfortably, if you want to reduce anxiety in the workplace, these steps will solve that problem for you. So there's six ways of nailing your ending. It's called the rule of recency. The most recent words people seem to remember. End with a summary, call to action, close the loop, close with a memorable statement or a quote, end with the benefits to the audience, what it means to them, focus on benefits, not features, solve the problem solve the issue. Upcoming webinars in the next month, how to organize and structure a speech, beginning, middle and end storytelling, and tips to make your PowerPoint presentations more effective, so less death by PowerPoint. If those webinar topics interest you, feel free to register. These two 30-minute uh, webinars are free. As always, I record them, so should you be unable to attend, send an email and we'll make the recording available to you. Workshops 3 in Karatha and just announced, or just to be announced, one in Bendigo in July. And plenty of availability to do in-house workshops in Perth, should any organisation desire one. Available to do conference speaking. How to contact me, your comments, your feedbacks, further questions. You've got my email, peter at peterdew.com, information on my website. Remember the last 30 seconds? So I cannot say, thank you very much. You've been a nice audience. Uh, I hope you enjoy this webinar. I hope you found something of use. Instead, I'm going to end with a summary. So the next time you end your presentation, don't do a soft landing, please nail your ending. Summarize, call to action, close the loop, memorable statement or quote, end with the benefits and the benefit to you of ending strongly is people remember your core message, solve people's problems and you'll be successful. Thanks everyone. This is Peter Jew, public speaking trainer and coach. Remember, Nail your ending. Mm -hmm.